Hi guys, welcome back to the desktop for another rules breakdown. And this time I'm going to be doing Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, the 1986 role-playing game by Games Workshop. This is the first edition rules I'll be covering. Now, first edition Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay is a very old and very traditional style of role-playing game. So the skills in it are actually basically unruled. If we turn to the skills section, um, it should be around here somewhere, skills, after the careers, there we go. We can see that each skill basically has a breakdown of what it can do. So if we go to the very first skill, let's go to acrobatics. Skill allows characters to be highly trained athletes capable of amazing feats of tumbling, leaping, jumping, etc. Characters with a skill should add two yards to the distance of any leap, add a plus two modifier to the die roll for damage from jumps and falls. In addition, they can climb all but sheer surfaces without needing to take risk tests, see jumping, falling, leaping, and climbing. Though characters with acrobatics can perform backflips, handstands, somersaults, and cartwheels without risk, they may not perform acrobatics and simultaneously combat, or attempt any manipulative actions such as opening doors. Characters with a skill may seek work as entertainers with a plus 10% modifier to employment tests or busk with a plus 10 modifier for the test. And that's what uh, acrobatics does. If you've got the skill, you can do those things. So every skill is handled differently. Um, they give bonuses to different things and you get modifiers, but essentially each skill is detailed within its description so when you're playing Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay there's a lot of flipping to the book to see exactly what you can do initiative in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay first edition isn't a rolled thing if we turn to the character sheet that's in the rules here and flip through it's around here somewhere there it is we can see the sample character has his stat block here. And this is his starter profile. These are the stats that he started play with. This is his advanced scheme. So his current career allows him to buy these improvements. And this is what he's currently got. So we can basically ignore for the matter of initiative what these improvements he's bought because he's only bought his weapon skill up. Now in his stat block, he's got movement, weapon skill, ballistic skill, strength, toughness, wounds, and initiative. Now, initiative's important, so he's got 29. But if we turn to the combat section, um, it should be around here somewhere, combat, we can see there's weapons in here, if I can find them. There they are, weapons modifiers. So we can see each weapon has an initiative bonus or not all of them, but most of them do. So a two-handed flail is very slow, so it reduces the initiative by minus 20. But a raper is very fast, and it increases it by plus 20. And you've got lances, you've got spears, knives and daggers, which are faster to move. So bastard swords are slower. And you include all of those, and once you've added your modifiers, you use your initiative plus or minus the modifier, and that's when you go. No dice rolls involved. Now, in combat, you get a number of actions based on your actions. So this character only gets one. And there's very few careers which actually allow you to increase that. So most characters will only have one, but people may have two or three. But it's not going to vary much. And when it comes to your actions, you get to act. And but depending on whether you're hitting with a melee weapon or with a ranged weapon, you're rolling on your weapon skill and your ballistic skill. Now, if we flip back to the combat section, we can see that the weapons, once again, have modifiers. So, we have, what here, the halberd, which, if it's got a penalty to act, actually gives you a penalty to hit as well. But you've got things like the lance, which gives you a plus to hit, and the spear gives you a plus to hit. Now, as well as that, you've got various modifiers, because the system is very heavily based around modifiers. So if you're charging into combat, you get a plus 10. If you have advantage of grounding, 
If you're winning the previous round, you get a bonus. If there's an obstacle in the way, if you're using the weapon with your wrong hand, if you're an arm unarmed, you get a penalty. Um, and there are various other ones for different conditions and all that. So when you roll, you apply all of those to your skill, and then you're rolling percentile dice and you're trying to roll under. So saying this character, let's ignore all the modifiers. He's just rolling his straight stat. He has 38, and we roll a 94, so he misses. And that's as simple as hitting in combat is. However, characters can also parry. And that's, you use one of your actions, and you roll your weapon skill to parry. So, let's say Clem is fighting a clone of himself. We roll, and 0-9, that succeeds on his weapon skill. So he's wasted an action, but he has parried an attack, and he will take no damage. Now, in determining damage in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, you have to work out first where they've been hit, because armor only covers certain areas. So, you take your damage roll, let's say this time we've rolled 26, and we reverse the dice. So we've got a 62 on the damage location, and we look that up, and a 62 is in the body on this chart here. Now, we can see that if the character's wearing a male shirt, they're going to get one point of armour. But first of all, we determine the damage. So, we roll a d6, and we get 3. We look at Clem's character sheet. And he's got a strength of three. So we've got up to six points of damage. Depending on the weapon he's using. If he's using a dagger, he loses two points of that. If he's using a two-handed sword, he gains two points. And so on and so forth. So we determine the damage. Then we deduct, deduct the armor. And then we deduct the character's toughness. And that's how many wounds they take. Health in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay is determined through wounds. And we can see Clem here has six wounds. So he takes six points of damage absolutely free. We can also see from his advanced scheme that he's got the option of buying ten more. But that's unimportant at this time. So any wounds he receives from combat below six, and he's absolutely fine. However, as soon as Clem reaches six wounds, and he's lost all his wound points, then we start rolling on critical hit tables. Now if we flick to the correct section here, here we go. We can see that we have the amount of damage that he's taking beyond his wounds. So if he's down at zero wounds and he takes a four points of damage, then we roll on this column. So we've got D100 roll, and we roll, and we've rolled 11. So we can see that he's received a nine. Now, he was hit in the body, so if we flip through to the body nine... Your blow strikes the abdomen, and your opponent collapses unconscious, losing one wound per round through internal bleeding until medical attention is received. And that's how critical hits work. Now, critical hits are also possible if you roll a six on the damage dice. You see, over here, sometimes a lucky or powerful blow will penetrate right to the very vitals of a target, causing greater than normal damage, or even death. When any character rolls a six on the damage die, before all modifications, there is a possibility that such a blow has been struck. The player rolls a d100 a second time. If the number rolled is equal to or less than the character's weapon skill, additional damage has been caused, and another d6 is rolled and the result added to the first die roll. So if you roll a 6, you roll to attack a second time, and then you roll another d6 to see what you've done. Finally, it's actually quite hard to die in Warhammer. If we flick to the terminal bleeding section, when a character loses extra wounds each round until treated either by a surgeon or healer, or until dead, by making a successful intelligence check, characters with either heal wounds or surgery skills can staunch the flow of blood. Repeated attempts may be made at the rate of one per round. However, the character will still die unless a successful operation is performed by a surgeon within 24 hours. Only a character with surgery skill can save the patient. The operation takes two hours. If the character makes a successful intelligence test, the patient will sleep for 24 hours, after which time he or she is restored to one wound point and is treated as lightly wounded. If the fail uh, test is failed, the character dies. So, if you've got a surgeon with you, you can treat the character. However, if there's no surgeon, as soon as somebody reaches critical hits, they're probably going to bleed out and die. <laughs> 
advancement in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay is done through your careers. So, as I pointed out before, Clem here has a starter profile of this, an advanced scheme of this, and then his current profile. So, in his current advanced scheme, from his career as an Outrider, he can get a 10-point improvement to his weapon skill, which he's already bought, a 10-point improvement to his ballistic skill, a 2-point improvement to his toughness, 10-point improvement to wounds, 10-point improvement to intelligence, and 10-point improvement to cool. However, Clem can also decide to exit to a scout, highwayman, or mercenary. Well, let's say he decides to move to highwayman. Well, that's an advanced career. So if we look over at this, we can see that the advanced scheme for that is plus 20 to weapon skill, plus 20 to ballistic, 1 strength, 1 toughness, 2 wounds, 40 to initiative, uh, plus 1 attack, plus 30 dex, plus 20 to intelligence, cool, um, willpower, and fellowship, uh, plus 30 to fellowship. However, he needs to buy certain things. So his trappings are a horse, saddle, and harness, a pair of pistols, powder, and ammunition for 20 shots, clothing of the finest quality, and a hand weapon, and a mask. So he must buy all of those before he moves to the career of highwayman and gains access to these. Now he spends experience points to buy the advances, and he spends experience to move careers. And that's how you advance in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. And that's the rules for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. I've gone over them very briefly, so obviously there's a lot more to them, especially to the skills where each skill details itself. But it's a fun old game. It's very much more brutal than Dungeons & Dragons, although it's a fantasy setting fairly similar. But players will lead, lead uh, shorter, more brutal lives. Anyway, as always, thank you very, very much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like what I'm doing. But most of all, you look after yourselves, and I'll catch you later. Bye now.